So one of the simplest carbohydrates uh, is glucose, which is a monosaccharide and contains both an aldehyde and an alcohol group uh, in the same uh, molecule, along with a, a few OH groups. Uh, it's green thick glucose has a number of OH groups because it makes it really soluble in water. It's a polar OH, uh, which is a polar bond. So uh, obviously, if it's a uh, the most common uh, dietary uh, simple carbohydrate, you, you want it to be soluble in water because your body is made up mostly of water. So it can travel around um, into cells pretty easily. And this open chain form uh, can be expressed also as a Fisher projection, which is just a way to uh, uh, simply draw uh, in an organized fashion, uh, all your chiral centers, which are bracketed by, on the top, an aldehyde group, and on the bottom, a CH2OH group. Again, those four chiral carbons uh, can either have the OH on the right or the left. This specific arrangement is uh, conducive to glucose. So when, when you see first an OH on the right, then an OH on the left, so then two OHs on the right, that means you have glucose. If that were arranged differently, then you would have a different monosaccharide. The last uh, of that OH determines whether it's D-glucose or L-glucose. If the D is on the right, that means it's, a, or actually the OH group is on the right, that means it's D-glucose. If it was on the left, it'd be L-glucose. D-glucose is a lot more common, so that's the way you know, you'd see it most of the time. If I took this uh, open chain form and drew it from a different perspective, uh, for example, as a Hayworth projection, what I'm going to do first is just draw that last CH2OH, and then uh, the carbon uh, backbone with the four chiral centers, and then the aldehyde, of course, at the end. And I'm just going to draw each OH, the one closest to the CH2OH. It really doesn't matter whether you draw it up or down, it's just going to be kind of out. Uh, because that's actually going to be the one that um, uh, gets changed to make the ring, which we'll talk about in a minute. And so the remaining three OH groups, if I, I have an OH on the right, it's going to be down. If I have an OH group on the left, it's going to be drawn up. So let's start with the one closest to the carbonyl group. That's obviously going to be down. Uh, from that aldehyde or carbonyl group. Next one uh, switches over to the left side, so that's going to be up. And then the the third one from the top is going to be drawn down. I could also draw on my H's, but that, that's optional. So that's my uh, Hayworth projection of the open chain form of glucose. And I circled that OH group in blue because something's going to happen with that to make the closed chain form. You recall if I have an alcohol plus an aldehyde, you always get a hemiacetal. So the hemiacetal or hemiacetal, uh, actually, uh, just for review, the electron-rich oxygen on the alcohol is going to attack the electron-poor uh, carbonyl carbon, and uh, you'll ultimately get uh, a hemiacetal. Which I'll draw there. And the same thing happens with glucose. This is the exact same reaction that occurs um, when uh, glucose reacts with itself to get a closed chain form of glucose. So that OH group, that's why I draw it so close to the uh, carbonyl carbon, is because uh, it's actually uh, attracted to it because of that uh, formation of the hemiacetal. And uh, if you draw, again, a line, which is the exact, the exact same reaction, going from the electron-rich oxygen to the electron-deficient carbonyl carbon, you get a closed ring. So that's a D-glucose open chain form. And I'm just going to redraw the exact same picture with the formation of the hemiacetal. So let's see, we have that OH attacking the carbonyl carbon, so I'll just draw that as part of the ring first. 
Since the new bond is formed again between that oxygen atom and the carbonyl carbon atom that was originally on the aldehyde. And the uh, OH is formed uh, from the um, uh, from the production of the hemiacetyl. And I'll just draw on the rest of, of the other parts of the molecule. My OH is up or down. And I'll keep that H I just drew actually. I should, to be consistent, keep it in green since that was originally part of the, yeah, there's a D glucose, you'll notice the closed chain form. And if the OH is written up, that's the beta anomer, uh, which is just a, uh, an anomer, it's just a type of isomer. And I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna assume change that H to green just to be consistent. Since that was, uh, again, that was the hydrogen that was part of the aldehyde. So, so beta anomer is when the OH is pointing up. You can also have the uh, alpha atomer, which is uh, pointing down. So that hemiacetyl group can form two different ways. Right? Again, you can have the OH group pointing up and, or, or the OH group pointing down. That's the OH group that's now in green. The other OHs, I'm just drawing the exact same way as I drew before uh, in the open chain form of the Hayworth projection. So what? why, why do you get uh, alpha and beta anomers, the beta anomer when your OH is pointing up, alpha anomer when your OH is pointing down. Well, it has to do with the fact that that aldehyde uh, in glucose is trigonal planar and flat because uh, even though there are four bonds there, uh, since it's a double bond, um, it's almost like two bonds are kind of compacted into one. So it forms a trigonal planar shape that's flat. Not tetrahedral like, you know, if carbon were to have just four regular single bonds. And since it's flat, the oxygen, the electron-rich oxygen can attack the electron poor carbonyl carbon from either the top or the bottom. So because it can form either the top or bottom, it's going to push uh, the oxygen that forms the new um, hydroxyl group one way or the other. So you get alpha, beta, up or down.